Hey guys, Sarah here. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing my best of beauty for 2018. I'm going to share everything that I was loving for the entire year. So if you're interested in that, keep watching. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe before you leave so you don't miss any of my future videos. All right, let's get into it. Okay, so first of all, I am sick, so I know I sound sick. I'm sorry if my voice is annoying. I want to jump into filming this year. It is January 3rd right now. It's Thursday and I just needed to get back in front of the camera, film a video, and that's the situation. So I'm sorry if my voice is annoying. Number two, I've got my toddlers and tiaras hairstyle going on with this little half up bun and my bow. I always feel like when I wear this hairstyle, I look like a child, but I also like kind of love it and I think it's super girly. Anyway, and then number three, I will link everything that I mentioned down below in the bottom bar. I'm going to try not to repeat a lot of products that I mentioned in last year's favorites, which I will link last year's best of beauty up here for you guys in case you did not see that one. Um, a lot of these products launched this year, but a lot of them are just products that I've been loving or maybe they're new to me or maybe I've been loving them for a couple years, but I just still love them this year. And then lastly, I asked you guys on Instagram, which if you're not following me on Instagram, definitely do that. It's just at Sarah Brittany. It is on the screen either here or here, um, and it's always linked down below. But I asked you guys if you wanted to see a part two with my hair, body, skincare, fashion favorites and all of that. And you guys overwhelmingly said yes, so I'm going to do a part two. Today is only going to be makeup, and then I will do a part two that includes all of those other categories so that today's video is not insanely long. All right, I'm gonna try and go in order of how I apply my makeup. So first up is primer. I have two primers to share with you. The first one is from Origins. This is the Original Skin Pore Perfecting Cooling Primer. I did a full video on this primer when it came out, which I can link that video up here for you guys. I still love this primer so much. It's an aerosol primer, and it's like a foaming primer that you can just press into your skin. It helps your pores be filled, and like your skin just has the most beautiful canvas for makeup. I love this. It does have a cooling effect, which is really interesting feeling, but yeah, this I cannot recommend enough. And then the other one, I just mentioned this, I think in my December favorites, this is the Bare Minerals Good Hydrations Primer. This is a hydrating primer, and it's what I use today. I actually use both of these today, but this I kind of used on the outer area of my face and my chin because I'm so dry right now. I think partially because I'm sick, so I've been blowing my nose a lot, and then partially because it's winter time and my skin is just always dried out in the winter. So these two primers, are amazing. Okay, next up are foundations. I'm just gonna say this from the get-go. I can only link, I think, like five things up in the cards, and I think that there's more reviews that I did on specific products that I love that are going to be in this video than I can list. So I will list all the videos and reviews down below in the bottom bar of everything that I mentioned today if there is a video on it. So the NYX Total Control Foundation Drops, I am obsessed with. I've been loving them all year. I just cannot get enough of these. I think this is my third little bottle of them. I do go through them semi quickly because I use quite a bit of them for a full coverage look, but this is something that you can get like a light coverage, medium coverage, full coverage. You can mix this in with your moisturizer if you want to get a really nice sheer coverage. I just think that they're so versatile and they're so good. The finish is very skin-like, which is my favorite type of finish. Next is the NARS Natural Radiant Longwear Foundation. I did a full video on this foundation. As you can see, I am about halfway through it right now. And this is another skin-like finish. Actually, I think all of the products I'm going to mention today are very skin-like, but this is just a beautiful coverage. You can build it up without getting cakey. And this is, I would say, like a medium to full coverage, but you can definitely add another layer. I usually put an extra layer right in this area where I have acne scars, and it covers it up beautifully gives me a nice full coverage look and it lasts all day. I think I mentioned this in last year's video, it's the Clinique 2-in-1 Conceal and Perfect. I love the packaging of this because it does have this gigantic doe foot applicator so it's super easy to swipe on. The one thing about this product is that it dries pretty quickly so when I apply it, I usually apply it to one area, blend it out, and then apply it to the next area, blend it out, and so on because if I put it all over my entire face, by the time I get to the end, it's really hard to blend everything out but this is a very full coverage foundation so if you want that like complete coverage, 
this is the one for you. I will say out of all the ones that I mentioned today, this is the one that I think looks like makeup the most on your skin, which depending on what I'm doing, I don't really care. None of these are just gonna look like you're not wearing makeup, obviously if it's a full coverage, but this one I think you can tell more. And then the last foundation type product is from It Cosmetics. This is the CC cream, the oil-free matte version that they came out with earlier this year. I love the packaging. I've said this on every video that I've done of these. Um, it has a squeezy tube, but also the pump. So you really get all of the product out of it. And I just love this. This was one of my go-tos all summer because it is more matte. So even though I set my skin either way, it just, I feel like it lasts longer. It does have SPF 40, which I obviously need an SPF when you're going to be out in the sun. The one thing I will say is if you're going out at night or you're going to do flash photography, don't wear this because it will give you flashback. I have two powders to mention today. The first one is from ColourPop. This is the No Filter Sheer Press Powder. This came out this year. This is in the shade Medium. I really love this. I think that ColourPop did a great job with their um, complexion products this year. So this one has really nice packaging. It is so affordable and I just feel like it leaves the nicest finish on your skin. You really have that nice airbrushed look. And then the other powder is from Laura Mercier. This is the translucent loose powder in the glow formula. This also came out this year. I did a full side-by-side -side comparison of the original formula and the glow formula. So I will link that video for you guys. But this is absolutely beauty beautiful. It's what I have on my skin today. I'll usually do my foundation and then set my face with this. And I've said this basically every time since I've gotten these comments, if I mention this product, I set my face with this, with a very small amount of this. I've gotten so many comments of people saying that you cannot set your face with it or that you shouldn't or that you're doing it wrong or whatever. You guys use makeup however you wanna use it. This works for me to set my face and it gives me a nice glow and like a lit from within look. I don't pack it on because you will get that glowy like golden glow look that I don't want. But if you use a small amount, I think it's beautiful to set your face with. So anyway, I love this. Use it however you want, whatever works for you. That's what you should do. Okay, let's talk about bronzers. If you guys have been following me for a while, you know that bronzer is one of my favorite makeup products. Bronzer and mascara are probably my two favorites. So my first bronzer is from Chanel. This is the Soleil Tan de Chanel Cream Bronzer. I had been wanting to try this for so, so, so long, and I just never did. And then I finally pulled the trigger this year and got it, and I love it. It's just the most beautiful formula, and the one thing I don't like about it is that it does only come in this one shade, which I don't even think it has a shade name on it. But what I do is I'll do my foundation and then I will pick up the bronzer with my sponge and just place it where I want it and blend it out that way. But it has a really nice, like slightly glowy, but not super glowy look. It blends out beautifully and I just... I am obsessed with this. The next bronzer, I've said this before, but this is my all-time favorite bronzer, and I just tried it out for the first time this year. It is from Hourglass. It is the Luminous Bronze Light, and this bronzer is just so gorgeous. It's this one right here. It has a bit of a sheen, but it's more of a lit from within glow. It is what I have on my skin today, and I just think that this is absolutely beautiful. The last bronzer I wanna talk about is from It Cosmetics. This is the Bye Bye Pores bronzer. So it has that double decker packaging where it has the brush underneath, which I've never used, and then it has the product and a mirror. This smells slightly of coconut, which you guys know I hate coconut, um, but it's pretty, pretty mild. Like I can deal with it, but this is a beautiful bronzer. I actually did a full video on this bronzer as well, so I can link that for you guys. But this one, again, has just the slightest bit of sheen, nothing major, and it's a neutral enough color that you can contour with it, but you can also warm up your entire face. I just cannot say enough good things about it, and I think it is beautiful. Okay, moving on to blushes. The first one is from Hourglass. This is in Mood Exposure. This, oh my gosh, this is just a gorgeous color. It's a pretty neutrally slash cool toned blush, which I love in the winter. And this, I think all of our glasses products just have that slight sheen to them. They're not completely matte, but they're not gonna be glittery or powdery or anything like this. It just leaves your cheeks looking so naturally flushed. The next blush is from Tarte. It is the Amazonian Clay Blush in the shade Exposed. This is another like semi-cool toned one. It has the mirror. I have used the color Doll Face in this 
uh, formula for years, but I decided to pick up another shade in Exposed this year. It's actually semi-similar to the Hourglass one. It's a little bit deeper and brighter, but that's it. They're both gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous formulas, and this stays put all day long. Next from Becca is the shade Songbird. This one is looks really orangey in the pan, but once you blend it out on your skin, it is so gorgeous. So this is what it looks like. It's a nice peachy shade, and it's actually what I do have on my cheeks today. And I will say last year in my favorites, I mentioned this palette, which is the Becca Blush with Light palette, and it does have Songbird in it. So between Songbird and Wisteria, these were the two that I was using over and over again. So this Songbird shade is not a new favorite at all in my collection. And then the last blush is from Burt's Bees. I've mentioned this a bunch of times. This is just the most beautiful blush formula. It's in the shade Toasted Cinnamon, and this is another peachy shade. So this is what it looks like, and this one is a little bit more of a harsher peach shade if that makes any sense you definitely can blend it out and make it look beautiful but you do need to use a light hand the same with the Becca one both of them are pretty pigmented but I think they're both equally gorgeous I have two highlights to share with you the first one is from hourglass I did a full video on this it's the vanish flash stick in the shade champagne flash this highlight is my all-time favorite highlight that has ever existed. It is just absolutely gorgeous. The formula does not accentuate pores or texture or literally anything. It just melts beautifully into your skin. It's what I have on today, and it's just the most gorgeous champagne shade. There are other shades of this, but this is the one that I gravitated the most towards. And again, you can blend it out. You can have... You can apply it straight with the stick and just apply it, or you can take your finger and apply it. I've done it both ways. I just cannot say enough good things about this. I use it almost every single day, and I still have tons and tons of product left. So I think that although it is expensive, you are definitely going to get your money's worth out of a highlight. And then the other highlight I want to mention is this one from Jouer. This is the highlight in the shade Topaz. Again, this is a gorgeous, gorgeous champagne -y highlight. I actually talked about this one in my full face of Jouer. It's this one right here. They're pretty similar in colors. The Jouer one is slightly more golden. And I will say that if I had to choose one, I would choose the Hourglass just because I think that it melts into your skin more and it doesn't accentuate any texture. Lastly, for face products, I want to talk about the Tarte Hamptons Weekender Palette. I was looking back through all of my favorites videos and all of my reviews for the year and I just realized that this just came out in 2018, which blows my mind because I feel like it's been a favorite of mine for years. I've talked about it countless times in favorites videos. I did a full review on it. I have been obsessed with this product. So it is a tiny little palette. It does have a nice size mirror, and then it has three shades in it. It has the highlight in Beach Getaway, the uh, blush in Summer House, and then the bronzer slash contour in Farmer's Market. It's hard to even see the names because I've used this palette so much but every single one of these shades works really, really well for me. I think they're all gorgeous. I love that the bronzer, you can highlight, you can contour, but you can also bronze up your entire face with it. So all of these shades are just stunning. But I have been a broken record talking about this, so when I realized it did just come out in the past year, blown away. Definitely, definitely, maybe even my top favorite of the entire year. Okay, let's move on to eyes. So I have three eyeshadow palettes. The first one is the Tarte Man Eater Volume 2 palette. This came out this year as well. I have a full review of it, and it comes with nine shades. This is my go-to travel palette because it has everything that I would need. It's got the neutrals, a few shimmer shades, the dark shades to use as your eyeliners, the nice transitions. It has seriously everything that I need. It's what I have on today. I use Purr, which is right here in the middle. I use this a lot, just thrown into my crease as the only shade on my eyes. I just, I have nothing but amazing things to say about this. If you have not swatched this, these shades are beautiful. They're creamy. They blend gorgeously. There's just, an, this is an essential for me. I don't know how I traveled before I had this. The next eyeshadow palette is the Urban Decay Aphrodisiac palette. Actually, I think I did videos on all three of these palettes, but this is a very tiny little compact palette from Urban Decay. 
This one's a little bit newer. It has six shades in it. Three of them are shimmer shades, and I like this one as well because it does have the nice mirror and the clasp packaging, but it is a good one to travel with. I've actually traveled with this one as well because it kind of works perfectly. You can set down your uh, primer or concealer with this, a nice transition, then you have your three lid shades, and this is a really nice dark shade to either deepen up your outer V or something like that, or to use it as eyeliner. This is actually the palette that I took with me when I went up north for New Year's Eve, and what I used on my eyes for New Year's, I actually used the shade Glare on my lid for New Year's, and it is the most gorgeous shade. So that is the aphrodisiac palette. And then lastly is from Urban Decay as well. This is going to be no surprise to you guys who have been following me for a while, but it is the Born to Run palette. This has a nice big mirror and it has tons of shades, tons of colors. This is one of those palettes that I feel like if you don't have any eyeshadow palettes and you really want to start jumping out of your box, this is a really good palette to have just because you can do so many different looks with it, but it also has those transition shades and the neutrals that you need for everyday looks. So I think the Man Eater is so great to like, travel with and all of that, and it's a great everyday palette. But if you do want to kind of step outside of your comfort zone, this one has so many beautiful colors in it. And the, the formula of Urban Decay Shadows is just amazing they are just such high quality they blend beautifully these shimmers are super pigmented and i just have nothing bad to say whatsoever about the formula of these the packaging of this palette is great because it does give you that nice big mirror and it does fold over so i feel like you can apply it with this mirror some of the mirrors are just so small that you can't really use them so yeah, this might be my favorite palette in my collection just because it's so fun and there's so many colors that I love to just play with. It's, it's an inspiring palette for me. I open it up and I want to play with makeup. So if you want to kind of explore with colors and stuff, I highly recommend this one. For eyeliners this year, I have three. I have the Maybelline Eye Studio Gel Liner in Blackest Black. This has been a favorite of mine for a few years. I actually just picked up a new one, but I have another one that I was using for a long time until it dried out. This one is absolutely amazing. I like to use it with a winged liner brush and you can just pick up some of the product and then it's just so easy to just wing out your liner. You can get a really precise or thicker line however you want to do your makeup with this. I just highly highly recommend this gel liner and it's from the drugstore which means it's affordable which we all love next is the 24 7 glide on eye pencil from urban decay this one is in the shade zero it's the one that i've used the most just because it is a black it's right here one of the things that i love the most about this and i've mentioned this in videos before but i will take this and i can just trace my eye with it and then i'll take a smudge brush or a pencil brush and just kind of blend it out to give it a more lived in look but then if you don't want as harsh of a line for your lower lash line you can just take your smudge brush and just dip it right into the edge of the pencil and then apply it with a brush instead of straight on with the pencil and it is gorgeous so you can definitely get a lot of uses out of this i used to only think that you could apply this straight on and that was it that is not the case there are so many ways that you can use all of your makeup products and then lastly for eyeliner is from jouet this is the kitten liner this one is another gorgeous one you can get a super precise line a thick line whatever you want from it it does dry down matte and the applicator is so precise i just cannot say enough good things about this liner it has stayed just as black as the day that i got it and i feel like a lot of these felt tip liners after you use them a couple times they'll be bending and the tips aren't as precise this one has stayed just as precise and black and pigmented and gorgeous as it was the first day i used it for mascara this year i have three favorites to share with you the first one is the l'oreal lash paradise i've talked about this a million times i actually think i had it in my favorites last year 
It is so good. It's one of the best drugstore mascaras ever. The second one I actually don't have in my collection right now, but I did do a full video on it. It is the NYX Worth the Hype Mascara. I will link the video up here for you guys or down below, wherever. Um, that one is so good. I don't have it in my collection right now. I'm trying to go through a few mascaras before I keep opening them up, but that one is an outstanding mascara, and it's also from the drugstore. And then lastly, continuing with the broken record theme, is my Hourglass Caution lash extreme caution extreme lash mascara I mess up those words every time I say it this is what I'm wearing today it is my favorite mascara that I've ever used it's a bit of a drier formula so if you like a really wet formula it's not going to be for you but if you do like a drier formula I feel like it really separates and lengthens my lashes and then it does layer nicely so I can get a second layer on and it just builds on the amazingness the only setting spray I want to talk about is the Milani Make It Last. It's what I use probably 320 of the days this year. It is amazing. I love it. I always spray it on my face and then blend my makeup back out with my Eco Tool sponge. Cannot say enough good things about it. I highly, highly recommend it. And it's from the drugstore. It's one of those products that I feel like I go through semi quickly, so I don't like to spend a ton of money on a setting spray, but this one is just the best. Another product that I'm sure will be no surprise to you guys is my Benefit Gimme Brow. This is really the only brow product I even want to mention this year, but I love it. You can just brush it through your brows really quickly. It has little fibers in it, so it gives you just a little bit of something, nothing crazy. I don't fill in my brows just because I feel like I already have bold enough brows and I don't need to go for that like super bold brow look. So this is really all I do to my brows and I love this stuff. Okay, the last category I wanna talk about is lips. So I have three lip liners. Two of them I'm sure I've mentioned in a million favorites before. The first one is from Marc Jacobs. This is the liner in the shade um, Nudist. And this is just one of those beautiful neutral shades. It goes with everything, it stays on all day. I just love it. I cannot say enough good things about it. Highly recommend it. I know it's a splurge, but it is seriously amazing. The next one is what I have on today. This is part of my favorite nude lip combo. It is the Buxom Plump Line Lip Liner. This is in the shade Stealth. And this one, again, is just so gorgeous. I have it all over my lips today. It's a nice peachy neutral shade. And I have this actually, I think, in three or four colors absolutely hands down one of my favorite liners of all time and then the last one is the charlotte tilbury liner this is in the shade oh it's actually called the lip cheat but it's in the shade pillow talk it's a cult classic color and i totally see why i tried it out a few months ago and i just cannot get enough of it i've been using it so 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 much so as you guys can tell, there's a bit of a theme going on with these neutral liners, but I just feel like a neutral lip liner goes under everything. The other half of my favorite nude lip combo is my Buxom Full On Lip Cream in the shade Blushy Margarita. I've talked about this a million times as well. This was just in my favorite nude lip products video. So this lip gloss, and then I'm also gonna mention the Bare Minerals lip gloss in the shade Sugar. I have full sizes of both of these and I think they're hiding together in one of my bags. But both of these are gorgeous. Neither of them are sticky or gross feeling or anything like that. This first one is the Buxom one in Blushing Margarita and then this is the Bare Minerals in Sugar. They're both so creamy and glossy as you can see. Beautiful, beautiful formulas. And I just think that they leave your lips nice and plump and juicy looking. This next one I think also came out this year. I'm pretty sure it's the Marc Jacobs Lip Gloss Stick. I have mine in the shade One Mauve Time. And it's really interesting because it comes in this like twist up packaging that looks like a lipstick. You can't twist it back down so you have to be very careful. But when you look at the outside of the packaging, it looks like they're lip gloss packaging and you kind of expect to pull out a doe foot, but it's actually like a lipstick package. But the formula is gorgeous. It's pigmented like a lipstick, but it's glossy and smooth and shiny like a gloss. It really is this hybrid formula. It is beautiful. If you have not swatched these, go into Sephora and swatch them. They are stunning. They come in tons of colors. I really like this one, but I've been eyeing a couple of other colors that I think I'm going to have to add to my collection this year. Then we have the Origins lip products that came out this fall. There's the Blooming Bold Lipsticks and the Blooming Sheer Lip Balms. The Blooming Lipstick, this is in the shade Sweeter Than Honey. This is the nude shade that I've been loving. And then I will just swatch the Balm shade. This is in Honey Blush. And I've also really been loving 
the, bl the the balm in Coral Daisy, which looks way brighter than what I would normally go for. But these are just so, so, so pretty. So this is the lipstick. It's a nice satin finish. It is so comfortable. And then the balm in Honey Blush and Coral Daisy. But the balms are a nice wash of color. They're super comfortable and nourishing feeling. They're not super, super pigmented, but they definitely do pop some punch if color. I love these. And then the lipsticks are a typical lipstick formula. They're a satin finish. They're so comfortable. They're not drying out your lips with that matte feeling. They're just gorgeous, pigmented. You don't have to apply it a million times to get the pigmentation you want. It's like a two swipe type situation. I can't say enough good things about these. I was so impressed with these and the packaging is like nice and heavy and beautiful. Like I love Origin skincare, but this was blew me out of the water. I was kind of skeptical just because I feel like when skincare brands do makeup or makeup brands do skincare, it's like kind of weird, but this was amazing. Last but certainly not least, I have to mention is my Fresh Sugar Lip Treatment in the shade Rosé. I mean, I just talk about this a million times over. This is a brand new one. I don't want to swatch it. Let me go grab my little mini one. Okay, so I have a full-size open one, but I think it's in my car. And then this full-size one I just got in my stocking, and I haven't swatched it yet or used it, so I'm going to keep it new for now. But I have this little mini guy of the same thing. Can you tell I'm obsessed with it? But this is what it looks like. This is, again, one of those that's like a light wash of color. This one is a little bit less pigmented than the Origins Balms are, but it still does give you a little bit of color. These, again, are just a gorgeous, gorgeous product. They do have SPF 15, and they feel so nourishing on your lips. It's one of those products, especially in the summer when I'm not wearing a lot of, the, a lot of makeup or I'm going on the lake or something like that, that I can just throw this on with super minimal like CC cream or something and just feel a little bit more put together, but still very low maintenance. Alrighty guys, those are my best beauty products for 2018. Let me know down below in the comments what your favorite products were for the year. I'm really curious to know what you guys were loving because obviously there were a lot of things that I was loving. So let me know down below in the comments. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed and don't forget to subscribe before you leave so you don't miss any of my future videos, including part two, which will be my hair care, skincare, body, all of those things in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye guys.